third segment of our first tutorial piece on Rat Girl Productions. After your inking, you might want to have some color. So, what we call this is the flat color stage. For flat colors, I like to have every single color that I work with in a different layer. All right, so we're going to make a ton of layers. We're going to make a layer for every single different color that we're going to lay down. Depending on if you want more patterning or things like that, you might even want more than what I make right now. All right, adding some layers. Keep in mind I am doing it beneath my ink layer. I want my ink layer to be the top layer for this, and I'll show you why in just a moment. Okay, once I have my layers made, I'm going to start renaming them to make sure I have enough. I'll just name one fur. Let's name the next one uh, ears, since we do have a different color probably inside those ears. We'll get the eyes, but there are many colors in the eyes, so there's eye whites. We have the iris, which is the color part of the eye. We have an eye pupil, usually a black. I'm going to make some more layers because it seems we are not done. We have an eye highlight. You might think that that would be the same as the white, but I will explain why it is not so in a second. We got a nose. We also got the nose highlight, the top of the nose there. We also have teeth. And although you can barely see it, we do also have gums. Let's make a group for all these layers, shall we? While I'm highlighting the gum layer, hold the shift key and click fur, or the bottom layer that you're dealing with. You can go up to the layer section and go to group layers, or you can simply as a hotkey hit control G. There we go. Rename it. I renamed it as color. I suggest you do the same at this point. And now you have an easy to handle folder of all your colors for your bases. So go ahead and pick a color that you'd like. I'll just choose a nice brown. And we're gonna go into the fur. Make sure, pro tip here, Make sure you're on the right layer at all times. It might take another second to do so, but it will save you tons of stress in the long run. Not that there aren't ways saving it, and I will show you some ways of saving grace later on, but it's still much easier just to make sure you're on the right layer. Now what I'm testing now is the magic wand. Sometimes, depending on how tight your line work is, you'll be able to do this with ease, which is select a section and then color it in from there. Since mine isn't so tight and there are gaps in it, what I will do is take off both the flow and opacity pressure points so that it's full opacity and full flow, and then go in with my brush tool and close those gaps up. Find any places where the, uh, the spacing might never be fully closed up otherwise, regardless of the tolerance of the magic wand. Sometimes you just cannot close as enough gaps as you need. So looking around, we're looking pretty good up here. I think this ear might need a little bit of work, so let's close those up. Some of these may be minute, but the more you do when you're zoomed in at one time, the less redos and 
zooming back in and back out that you have to do. So if it seems like it might be a problem, odds are it's good just to fill them in right now. If you go past the line a little bit, you can always erase. Nothing wrong with erasing. selection going on. Now to select more, hold down the shift key and keep clicking where you want to color. And click one more, here we go. It looks like I have just about everything I need to color in this color selected. Right now, tolerance is 30, which is still rather low, but it's not going to capture the entire edging around where the ink is. This is precisely why I wanted the ink on the top layer, because we're going to modify in the select section and expand by at least one or two pixels, so I'm going to go up there again and make it another. So modify, expand, one pixel. If you know that you'll always expand by two or three, you can set that in that little box. Now I'm gonna to go to the edit and click fill. Foreground color is that brown color that you see on the left. Background color is that white that you see next to it. All right, it's looking rather well. But you always want to make sure to go in after setting down the colors to make sure that you grab any pieces that weren't filled in automatically. Odds are this part doesn't take very long. So just go in with your brush tool, find any pieces that need filling in and just dab them on. If you go past the line, again, just erase. Simple as that. If you see a larger or smaller area that you want to deal with, that you know that you could fill in without having to erase later if it was smaller or larger, then the easiest way for a hotkey to change your size of your brush are the bracket tools to the right of the P key. P is in Paul. The left bracket will make it smaller, and likewise the, uh, the right bracket will make it larger. It's much less of a task to do that than going up to the size bar and manually sliding it or typing it in. So here I'm just filling in some more of the colors. Now what I'll probably do from now on is work with a macro that I've already put into my Photoshop CS5 software. What macros do, you can have the program memorize a series of commands that you can then apply to a hotkey. So what I have done with mine specifically is I have assigned Control F2 to do the following. What it does is once I have highlighted everything I'd like in my magic wand, all I have to do is do Control F2 and it will go to the select bar, go to modify and expand by two pixels, and then it'll go to the edit bar for me and then fill in the foreground color. That saves a lot of clicks and a lot of time. If you're wanting to know how to work in some macros yourself, I'll be making another tutorial on that very soon. 
but there are some very nice tutorials out there already if you'd like to speed ahead and find it before I make one. Alright, it's looking like we've gotten all of the needed brown spots out of the way. So I think we're ready to move on to the next colors. I'm going to make a lighter color and we're going to make that in the ears. So, moving up to the ears, I don't see any reason why we can't just magic wand this. So I'm going to magic wand and I'm using that macro command right now. Wasn't that much faster? Now keep in mind that the order in which the layers are put onto your list is actually very important to how they'll show up on your image. So the ears right now is over the fur, so if I go past the, the line work for the ears, it will show up on the fur. If the ears were behind the fur, that wouldn't be the case. Although it would technically still be there, it would be hidden by the, the brown fur. Unless, of course, it went past even that, and then you'd see it, of course. Alright, so now let's go ahead and go to the eye whites. Now this is the reason why I have eye highlight and eye white separate. It's always better to choose a non-white white. And what I mean by this is go slightly colorized rather than just a straight white. It will be easier to uh, show off your highlight layer and it'll also be easier to just give more depth to that eyeball. So I go usually into a blue and as faintly blue as it does look, it actually works really well as a eye white. So this one doesn't really need too much touch up. There's not a lot of ins and outs in this shape, so it's not taking very long. If ever you do see there's uh, mistakes that you made along the way or you forgot to fill something in, you can use the eyedropper tool. Highlight the color that's the mistake and make sure you're on the correct layer and fill it in. Looks like I forgot the layer. Let's go back up to eye white, shall we? Now what happened here is that I filled in those layer points on the fur layer. Easy way to do this and to move it onto your other layer is go to your magic wand tool, take off the sample all layers point it's the check mark right next to contiguous. Uncheck that and then highlight that color that was a mistake. It will grab that color. Then you can select and choose similar and it will choose all of that color that was a mistake on your bases. So this really only is a fix it if you're in the base coloring stage. When you're starting to do gradients and shading, it's much harder to deal with. Once you have those highlighted, you can right click on your mouse and choose layer via cut. What that's going to do is make that all that selection on a new layer so it's removed from your fur layer or whichever layer you're trying to fix. You're going to bring that new layer up right underneath the one that you're dealing with, which in this case is eye whites. While that layer is highlighted, hold down the control key, click eye whites, make sure again that whichever layer you're trying to add it to is above it, and simply right click and merge layers. There you go, it is now part of eye whites and you don't even have to rename it. Now let's move on to the iris. This one should be very straightforward, so I don't even think I'm going to need to fix this. Here we go, 
looking good. Let's move on to the eye pupil. I'm going to usually just make this a black. Sometimes even in the blacks you want to make not as black so that it, it will stand out. When it comes to pupils, I don't mind it being the darkest black possible. But when you're coming to colors or fur, you definitely want to lighten that black into a darker gray. That way you can shade it better and the highlights will show up a little bit better and won't be as a stark contrast. All right, pupils are filled in. Now the eye highlight, you might just say, oh, it's already white. I don't need to deal with it at all. But that is not the case. You still want to fill it in with a white color. So we chose a white and it is now filled in. The reason being is that you're actually seeing that white on the background layer. If we decided that we wanted to uh, take off that background layer and put something else in f behind this rabbit, you would actually see that behind image inside of those highlights of the eyes if you did not fill it in. Common sense, but commonly, commonly forgotten to do. Alright, we're filling in the nose. Again, the nose doesn't take too long to, uh, to fill in the cracks. It's a very simple size and shape. Putting in a little bit lighter color in the highlight part. So now there's two uh, corners to the nose. We're going to do that little piece of gum. Fill it in just a little bit. Some artists might not go to this extent. But I really, even if it's a tiny, tiny bit, I like to have that little detail of color. Now again, I did mess up, so I'm doing that little layer via cut trick and moving them into the respective layers that they're supposed to go in. So again, this does show that sometimes even veterans of doing this can forget what layer they're on. All right. So you might see that I'm doing a little bit of a yellow. You don't want to go too far yellow unless of course your character does have yellow teeth, but having a more natural tooth white, you're going to have a little bit off white on there. If it's completely white, it's not going to look right. Some people do a yellowish. Uh, some people also work with a blue tint. Um, since I usually work with the blue tint on the eyes, I usually do a little bit of a yellowish white on the teeth. It just kind of makes more sense in my head. Alright, and now from here we have a finished base color rabbit, or in other words, flat colors. Some people will stop at this point. Uh, sometimes I actually work in different commission levels, and this is one of my commission levels I work in. Here you go. My computer's a bit mad at me right now, <laughs> but it's all worth it for making this tutorial, so I hope you've enjoyed this part of it. We are going to now move on to more uh, advanced uh, shading, and thank you very much. See you in the next section, which is cell shading your character.